This is the reality show on Calabash TV. This is the reality show on Calabash TV for yet another Monday in St. Lucia. And uh, as usual, we have with us in studio Ambrose, who is to my immediate left. Yes. Certainly good to see you again. Yes, it's good to be here. And Michael is back with us again. Michael, certainly good to have you. Nice to be back, Bernard. Good. And everybody looks fresh and everybody's okay. Yeah. Every, <laughs> everything's all right. <laughs> I guess you rested for the holiday. It was a holiday. Wow. Um, the Emancipation Day holiday. Uh, I didn't celebrate. Okay. Well, you, you're usually with me once once I'm not, uh, you know, have any, anything to do. I just, I just stay home and rest all day. I hardly ever venture out okay. since my impasse. So I know we all have assignments for today, <laughs> but I wanted to touch very, very briefly on the emancipation, the, well, the holidays generally. I find um, we, we do get quite a bit of holidays in St. Lucia. Last time I checked, about 12 or 13 holidays, and we thank the Catholic Church for giving us a few of those holidays. <laughs> um, but um, I was wondering if we're losing the significance of it, why are we having it? Because emancipation, they passed, and we used to have emancipation Day activities, and nothing happened. And I thought, considering the significance of emancipation for us as a people, that we ought to have had some, you know, kind of a celebration. Same with Labor Day and May Day. Uh, May Day passes is just like a holiday. If, uh, I mean, it's a good break from work and so on. But if we get a holiday for a particular um, event or particular, you know, activity, I think we ought to at least acknowledge and, you know, and I just thought very, very brief one minute, two minute discussions on it in terms of whether we should keep those holidays because we have Thanksgiving and we don't, we don't really give thanks to anybody or anything. So should we keep those holidays or should we just, um, you know, abolish them or reassign them, give us a Nobel laureate day or something. Uh, but I think the, the, the holidays, are, they are on our calendars and getting rid of them, I think, I think will, be, will be a Herculean task. I think what we need to do is make proper use of it, for especially em Emancipation Day. I mean, we, we know the significance of Emancipation Day. I, I think the authorities, and when I say authorities, I don't mean government only, um, local groups, community groups. Could, could come together and, and, and ensure that Emancipation Day, a day like Emancipation Day, is, is observed, you know, nationally. So, you know, the Corpus Christi, all right? We, I remember growing up as a child, Corpus Christi is when we had a traditional thing of, you know, roasting your nuts and going back, going to the beach and things like that. And we, 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 are, we are losing it, but I think, I don't think it is too late. I think, um, uh, although the, 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 the young generation, they're not into the, the things that we grew up with, but I think I think we still have persons around that could that could resuscitate those those, those holidays and, and make something out of it. Yeah, because Ambrose ask a few people and most people have no idea sometimes what the holidays are for. They just know we have a holiday and they're not quite sure what it is for. So what's your take on it? Well personally, I think we have too many holidays. I'll be quite honest. I think sometimes it's like, hey, what is a holiday? As a matter of fact, I have a few holidays uh, ago. I remember telling I was speaking to somebody, oh, I said, Oh, by the way, Monday is a holiday. It's like they what? Monday is a holiday. And to me, if, if people approach holidays, public holidays that way, it means that that really is not that significant. And really and truly, I think we should keep um, holidays that really speaks to us as a people and really and truly, you know, reflects who we really are. And, and these are the holidays, like, I mean, I don't know, what is Corpus Christi really celebrated for? I don't know. I mean, so it's Catholic, it's a religious holiday. Yeah, but I mean, the thing about it is, uh, why, 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 why must we have, I mean, I know holidays, the word holidays comes from holy days, you know, and, and, and so that's, that's, the root, that's the root of it. But what, what really is the significance? Uh, to me, a holiday should have some sort of significance. Like, for example, in America, they have, like, Martin Luther King Day. I mean, just making a direct reference to Emancipation Day. I mean, shouldn't Emancipation Day be something of great significance and from a, from a, on a national level should be something that we... I mean, I, I know a few people, people made some efforts. I know there were some talks and the television carried some things. I remember the Luntley was involved in something. And, but at the end of the day, really and truly, Emancipation Day just came and went. I don't know what difference did it really make. I don't, I don't know. Um, to me, it, it should be given the same kind of prominence that nationally gets in December. December 13th, um, it's a national day, the day we were supposedly discovered, uh, but um, we should make a bigger, a bigger deal out of Emancipation Day, which is more significant for us. You, sorry, sorry yeah. you mentioned National Day, mm -hmm. and there's a big confusion again. What is National Day? But now that I think when, when we were growing up 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, these holidays meant something to us. Okay, we celebrated those, those holidays. My point here is, whilst we were able to celebrate it back then 
the new generation, they've kind of moved away from it. I think what we need to do, those of us who knows of the significance of this is, try to inculcate in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the young persons the significance of those is, and for, for them to start observing and celebrating like we did when we were growing up. But, but I was going to say in relation to that, Mike, Michael, the confusion is, do we ourselves even know why we celebrate the holidays? For example, you just made mention of National Day. I remember last year when we celebrated National Day, I kept asking the question, why do are we celebrating? It started off as Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. Then obviously we discovered that Columbus did not, did not discover us, didn't even come anywhere near our island. And so all those years we were lied to or, well, or mistaught. Then it became, was it Queen's birthday? No, it's National Day. The Queen's birthday is in, Ju is in June. But, no, but, but the point is, I, I, and then I was asking somebody, what, are we, what exactly are we celebrating on the 13th of December? What are we celebrating? What is it? What are we celebrating? And I couldn't get anybody to tell me. All somebody was able to tell me is about the greasy pole. <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned the greasy pole. And I was thinking, even the significance of the greasy pole. What is the significance of the greasy pole? In a day like today, should we be having a greasy pole? I mean, what is the history behind the greasy pole? It, it makes reference to, to people, the underclass, being a pole being put at the end of something. I think I was told by, by um, fish. Fish Alphonse seems to have a lot of information on this about they put in the putting the prize at the end of a pole that didn't go upwards but went actually that way and it was done in the basin they call it Georgia Fifth mm -hmm. I think Georgia Fifth area there and and the poor the poor people they call them the the rough the the wolf rats which we used to call people before who used to die for coins from tourist ships and things like that to me I don't know it's to me I think they need to find some significance to the National Day and really and truly let us truly begin to celebrate National Day because I think there is purpose for us to have for us to have a National Day but we need to really as a nation form an idea as to what it is really that we are celebrating. You know what the problem is we're not I think we need to be a little more nationalistic than we are because um, we will find in St. Lucia St. Lucians will more observe the, the holidays in the U.S. and those places. They mm -hmm. know of them. They know the significance of them. Um, but when it comes to their own, you know, they, 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 we've lost touch with it. And, and I think the, the significance of those days, what I know of it, what those of us who grew up in the 70s, 80s, you know, um, 90s, um, is still there. It's just that the young generation, they're not aware of it, and as a result, they, they really don't, 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 don't give a damn with it. So I think, I think it, it, people like, like, like Patrick Anthony, Papa, who, who, who knows you know, of that, um, George Fish Alphonse, like you mentioned, um, there were quite a number, there's a gentleman, who, I think he was a former lecturer at, at, at St. Mary's College. Uh, Mr. Daniel. Mr. Daniel, who yes. knows of the significance of those days. I think, I think people like that could have programs where, of course, like we're doing now, to, to, to explain to today's generation what, what those days meant back then and to see if we could, you know, re, re, re engine in, in, in our youth. But the key thing I'm saying, I agree with you, we need to really have an, we need more national pride in yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but, but the thing is, there is also a lot of confusion around it too, because in truth, I mean, I'm being honest with you, I really do not know the significance of National Day because I grew up with National Day as being Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. But now that this has been scuffered and, and, and we now, we, that has been revealed as, as an untruth, we now need to replace information. I think if it means we have to start fresh, there's no shame in that. Let us discover what it is that we, we, can, we can celebrate December 13th for and we can start that as a basis for something. You know, but I, and, and so you can't totally blame the young people too because at the end of the day, we, we, we accepted it, but now that knowledge has increased and the young people themselves like we are learning that the information is, is out there says that what we were really celebrating was not worth celebrating so we need to change it now but nobody has really taken the bull by the horn and decided this is what we're going to celebrate on national day no, I agreed uh, completely and um, i think considering the significance of emancipation you know we ought to um, i mean i understand national day we want to celebrate what is truly St. Lucia. I, I i think it phased out uh, columbus um, um, observance and so on um, so we more look at celebrating us as a solution. It's the end of the year. You give, you know, you thank, um, you know, Festival of Lights and so on. And actually, St. Lucy's is, I think, December 13th, Festival of Lights as well. Yes. So they kept it as that as well. Yeah, Michael? But I take, for instance, um, over the last 20, 25 years, um, what's the, the significance of, of Junior Creole? 
when we grew up, Zuena Creole was not that significant, mm. all right? But because they put so much emphasis on, 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 on you know, a Zuena Creole thing, it has grown. And I think the same could be done for the other national holidays that we have. Mm. And this is why I'm saying those of us who knows, those who know of the significance of those days, could do just as they're doing for, for the, for the Zuena Creole to ensure that the youth grew up knowing what it is. And, and of course, we reinvigorate you know, the, whole, the whole process in, 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 in celebrating those days. But we wanted Zuena Creole to focus on the language because I think we focus too much on the food and the madras and everything yeah, else yeah, and the times and all the, the old kettles and the old irons and so on. And we, the language is completely ignored. Yeah, Nobody yeah. speaks Creole on Junior Creole mm -hmm. these days. So I think one of the key things for me is that if we go on, and I think it, we should get that as a holiday as well, but celebrate the language because you're celebrating Creole, which is our lifestyle. So you're celebrating our Creole lifestyle. And I think, um, but we need to have a very strong focus on the language itself, which is unique to us, because I even understand that um, Creole is not an official language in Lucia, which is kind of, you know, to me, dialect, uh, quite uh, a travesty because it's us, it's our culture. It ought to be, and it's spoken in Parliament, um, it ought to be um, a, a, an official language in St. Lucia as well. But certainly for the Emancipation Day holidays, and I, I suspect, I, I haven't seen the picture, but I understand there was a Freedom Monument that was put in Soufre um, as part of the launch yeah, of the... Yeah. Um, the square. the square, which yeah. is, um, I think, is a, right, a step in the right direction if it's supposed to reflect um, our emancipation day and our past in terms of, you know, the, the, especially in the Sufra area where there was quite a bit of revolt um, yes. of the slaves. I, I mean, I read some of the stuff. It's quite, I can't believe <laughs> the kind of atrocities that, um, you know, that, that visited St. Lucia, I mean, Sufra, the Mon, the kind of violence. I mean, one instance, I remember slaves went to, to the plantation house and asked for, you know, freedom and, or whatever. They asked for some, some rights and, and, and they rounded them up and, killed. and beheaded them yeah, and then put the head put in the, the square. Up. It's interesting you mentioned that, that um, uh, Bernard, because I, I read some on social media, they, 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 they named, they, they, I think they, they, they mark it and the bus terminal in Sufre after um, events that took place in the immediate area where, where the market and anything is. And people were questioning why, as to why they did, because um, I think it, 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 it almost sounds like a, a, an area in the U.S., no no, was, no, 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 Trafalgar Square, Trafalgar, Trafalgar Square. Square. Yeah, Trafalgar well, Square, well, right. no, 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 I think, uh, it was, yeah. it was only then I, I never knew of, of that, that history of, of Sufra. I heard of Trafalgar Square, right? Square, yes. And it was, it was only then I, I, I I'm saying, but Trafalgar, uh, Old Trafford, you mean? Old Trafford, Old Trafford, Old Trafford yeah. yeah. Because I think, I think a lot of people, you see, because nobody knows the name of the place, and I think that's what it is. Because when people think of Old Trafford, you think mm. of England and you think of cricket because yeah. when you watch mm -hmm. cricket yeah, you watch yeah, cricket England, in Old Trafford yes. I think which is in Manchester yes. in England so the thing about it I think basically that's what it is so people actually associate Old Trafford with England and so when you heard of a square in Soufre called Old Trafford you're thinking oh you're coming with a new style but obviously I am now yes, learning it, it, that that part, place has always been history, called yeah. Old yeah, yeah, Trafford yeah, 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 of yeah, Soufre yeah. Mm -hmm. and that, like, that's what I'm saying I was not aware of that, and I mean, I'm in my age, not, 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 not knowing of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, at, at, at times it goes, it pays to, for us to discuss things like that and, and bring out the issues and, and, of course, to get persons with more experience to come out and discuss it. And, you know, we, 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 I think we need to do that. I was going to say, I was going to say, one thing I've discovered about us as St. Lucians, we're not very proud of our history, and a lot of us lack knowledge of our history. I mean, I mean the truth and reality is a lot of St. Lucians do not really waste their time learning what it is that makes them who they are as a people. And so what we, we do, we adopt a lot of the old American standards. I wouldn't even say British standards. I would say we adopt the old American standards and we basically live our life by these standards. And it's really sad in a way because when I, when I read on, like there's a family, the, uh, is it the Gouliad? Uh, Gilead family. There's a woman. In, in 17, 1795, I think it was, a revolt led by a female. Oh, Flory. Um, uh, she's named after, Peter Flory is named after her. Right. Right, Flora. Why is it that we don't, so they, they, they talk about us as a people, we're not, we're not, mm -hmm. we're not, um, protesters by nature that's not true our our for our forebears they were protesters and this woman led a revolt and mm -hmm. actually a very successful one yeah. too i mean obviously you went against the might of the british and things like that. but the truth of the matter is i really it saddens me sometimes i'll be honest you saddens me to this to the point where i want to cry sometimes when i think of saint lucia we are not a proud people and that's really really sad yeah you're right and the floor was named after, after this particular her, yeah, brigand yeah. And you're right, um, if, if we don't know what she looks like, but at least a monument to celebrate her 
you know, you know, she led the revolt and she won it as a, as a, as a woman, yeah. mm -hmm. leading a band of brigands and so on. So, I mean, that's quite a major achievement. That's what I'm saying. When you read, if you go on the Sufre um, page, and also the book by um, Robert DeVoe as well, um, it's amazing. Um, well, they call Jul it brigands. Julian, ha uh, Julian Hampson. Uh, as well. Dr. But, Hampson. Yeah, but um, Robert yes. DeVoe has one. They call it brigands, and that is oh, quite an amazing book. Okay, that one, yes. Um, about the, you know, the, the fight. Of, of the slaves. It's who were, exciting. It's, it's, it's exciting. It's sad as well because sad but exciting. yeah, because the number of persons who got killed, um, slaughtered, and so on. It, it's because you were fighting up against the British and the French occasionally, and so on. So I mean, and people getting guillotined and so on. It's quite a, a painful history, but it's something that we need to acknowledge. And those people have basically fought to pave our freedom, and so we have to celebrate them and to acknowledge their contribution. Um, it is. So December thirteenth is Saint Lucy's Day. And St. Lucy's is a festival of lights. Um, I think this it's also celebrated in Sweden as well. St. Lucy's Day is celebrated in Sweden. St. Lucia's Day, they, well, I'll correct it in a while, but it's celebrated in Sweden as well on December 13th. There's a festival of lights in Sweden, but named after the patron St. Saint, Saint Lucy. All right, so um, we, that's our history lesson for today. And <laughs> this, <laughs> we finish our and, uh, may we have more? We'll yeah, have, yeah, we need yeah, to yeah, have more. I think, yeah, think, think yeah, it would be yeah. good. That'll be part of our, our public duty um, mm -hmm. to. to, to Focus a little bit on that. Now, okay, so we have some homework um, yes. for the. We talk about the, the National Insurance uh, Corporation yes. and the cardboard investments and so on. So I don't know who wants to start the batting. And do we toss a coin? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to toss a coin. The oh, only okay. thing I would I would make a few corrections. Um, um, so I did my homework, and not only did I do my homework, I went to the sources actually. Um, I want to confirm one thing. There are a few things Michael said last week mm -hmm. that were not right. Actually, they were not correct. One in terms of ownership of the property. Um, I, Mr. Pilgrim, I spoke to Mr. Pilgrim myself, and he said that they never owned that land. Who, the, the Pilgrim? The, the Mr. Pilgrim and I, Julia, was, was mentioned last week. But he was a receiver, yeah. wasn't he? No, no, no. no. Oh, well, Michael responded, no, I no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I spoke to he Mr. Spoke Mr. Pilgrim, Pilgrim himself, yes, okay. so that's information, is first-hand information. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, they never owned that land, um, so I'm assuming that they probably leased that land. At they some is point. the Pilgrims. As in... Pilgrim and Judah, and, okay. which, which were the two names that were mentioned by Michael last week. Um, they never owned that land, but that actual land was owned by a German man. Yeah. I think his name was, I'm, I'm telling you. Well, he's reporting what he thought, yeah. Right? <laughs> the, it was owned by a Jan German man called, mm. this, I think, Dissum. Dissum. Mm -hmm. And then he sold the land to Cap Lands. Cap Lands were the owners of that land, and they got, it was done through Scotia. And then that land went into receivership. And basically that land has been in the hands of Scotia. So the Cabot people, they never, they never so owned that So what is land. Pilgrim's connection to the land? No, no. Originally they used to, they, I think they originally they list that land. As Michael did point out, he said owner, ownership, but they, they didn't own. I think the possibility, well, that's the only thing I could think, because if you're connected to the land, it's either you own it or you lease it. So I suspect the lease was theirs. Okay, so but you, never you, owned you spoke the to land. I spoke to him directly. Mm -hmm. They never owned the land. Now, the land was, like he clearly said, the land was owned by a German man. And that land was sold to Caplands, and then Caplands went into receivership. The, pers the, the gentleman from Canada, the Cabot man, mm -hmm. does not have ownership of that land, has never had ownership of that land until effectively that deal that's going down there. The thing about Gil and Judah mm -hmm. and Mikey Pilgrim, I'm not asking. Um, they were developing that land, um, it was not, that's near Cotton Bay. I'm trying to remember the name of, of, of when, it, when it went bottoms up. Literally went into, into bankruptcy, mm -hmm. okay? And they had no choice but to give up the development. And it was then the land went into receivership. And that's not, that's not too long ago. That's like probably 15 years ago, 10 to, between 10 to 15 years ago. All right? So when, when, when I, I'm saying that as a matter of fact, um, <laughs> because, wow. because I know it, I mean, mm -hmm. Mikey could, could choose to tell you what he wants. Um, but I know. Um, part of that development, okay, was the, it is owned by some Ochilia families who were my neighbors immediate in immediate immediate area okay so i i know the connection to that land I, so you know when when he says you know he had no I, but I, then i, I see says in a statement that the land was in foreign hands i think in one of the press releases it yeah. says the land was in foreign so, so no i said part of the land part of the owned, land part of okay. the land was owned by by locals mm -hmm. okay that's back then um as to as to who 
owned it two, three, four, five months ago. No, no, I, no, I, not two, three, four, five months ago. That land I, I, I went tell. to Caplands. Caplands actually were the owners the, of that land. Caplands, mm -hmm. the Cap Estate people, they were the owners of that land before it went into receivership. And so from that, clearly, he says, so, the, but the, the, the point is, basically, the Canadian man has never had ownership of no, that but land. My question there is, if the land belonged to the Cap, Cap Estate, the Cap land, mm -hmm. how, how was um, Pilgrim and, and, and the Judas? No, that was as actually before the land went to capital. The land was always owned by the German man, he said. No, but, but they were if they were doing whatever development, whatever development you, they were doing. No, no, but listen to this, sir. Uh -huh. But you can, if I own a piece of land, I can give you the land to develop. I still am the owner of that land. And then I decide I'm going to sell it to Bernard. And then when I sell it to Bernard, no. Bernard buys it through a bank. And then Bernard can't keep up the payments, and so the, the land goes into receivership. Whilst I'm not refuting what you're saying, mm -hmm. but it's kind of confusing, all right? Because here it is, he said, I'm saying he said, mm -hmm. the land was owned by, or have been owned by the Cap, cap lands for, for a while. Oh yeah, Cap lands owned the land when it went into receivership. Cap lands, they actually owned the land when, when it, it went, went into receivership. So, 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 in other words, they were developing that land for, for, for Cap lands. I might want to understand that. No, no, but I mean, think oh, about oh. it, Michael. If you have, if you own a piece of land and you give somebody a piece of, you lease a piece of land to somebody. If you lease a piece of land to somebody, right, mm -hmm. and the person wants to build a KFC or or, or but, McDonald's, a McDonald's on it, they are developing that land for you, effectively. But it's their, it's their land, so they own no, it. My, my, they, my, no, what you missing? What you missing there is, if the land was owned by Cap Lands, yeah, okay, and Mike and them were developing it. No, no, no. He it didn't say that. He said it was the land was owned by a German man. Mm -hmm. He even gave, gave me his n the name of the German man. Yeah. His name was, I think, is um, what did I just say. I think I just said this, uh, this something, this this sum, this, this, sum. This, this sum or something like that. A German man owned the land. The actual yes. owner was viewed as a German man. Okay. So NIC says in a statement that um, it must be noted that this land was previously in foreign hands, mm -hmm. and NIC sought to purchase the property outright, but was unable to do so as the receiver had committed to sell it to the stakeholders of Cabot. So um, that's from an NIC statement. Yes. So, so that's what I'm saying. So when the land went into receivership, mm -hmm. Cabot did not own the land. Nobody but said a stakeholder that. of Cabot. Nobody said Cabot owned the land yeah. when it went into receivership. No, no, no. But see what happened is that you see NIC gave $27 million to Cabot. We agree on that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we agreed on last and week. And the right? NIC says to develop the golf course. Right. So, yeah. so, mm -hmm. let's to develop. So, 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 hold on. Yeah, to develop. To yeah. develop. Mm -hmm. So, we're saying NIC gave the money to Cabot to develop. But mm -hmm. when NIC gave money to, the, for, to Cabot, I think last week, like I said, the land was at that point in receivership. But whether it no, was. No, 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 no. You mentioned no, receivership. No, no. We will go through the tapes. We yeah, but let's, let's tapes. move forward. We're moving but forward. Moving this forward. Week. Yeah, yeah. But the key thing is here's the key thing. So, I'm talking about the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Cabot did not own the land before NIC gave them, effectively, the money. But they said a stakeholder of Cabot. What That's what the, NIC statement, what the NIC statement says. What, what did he say? They were trying to buy the property mm -hmm. when it was in receivership. Mm -hmm. But the receiver had already committed to selling it to a stakeholder, stakeholder of Cabot. Of Cabot. A stakeholder of Cabot. A stakeholder of Cabot. So it could be that land is owned by a stakeholder of Cabot. Because Cabot is an entity. Cabot, Cabot is a group. Right. Cabot is a group. So but, but hold anyway. on. And, and let me just clarify, some, on, let me just clarify something, yeah. Bernard, please. What I said mm -hmm. last, last week was the land went into receivership whilst Pilgrim and, 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 and company were trying to develop the land. Right. Okay? After that, the only other owner I knew was when I understood Cabot purchased the land. Yeah, so, so that's, the, so that's the, the, the sequence of events. The land, when, well, you talk about... The, um, so you're right, it was in foreign uh, hands. Judah, it was in foreign hands. Probably the German. The German man, possibly. And, and then, then basically, he went, he went into receivership. But no, not in the hands of the German. It was sold to Cap Lands. Right, and then it went into receivership. And then it went, I just and say Cap the Lands must have. And then the stakeholder of Cabot took over the So whoever okay. that stakeholder is, but I mean, the, the, the <laughs> Kaplan's who, who own Kaplan's? Who? That's a, now that would no, be the, the question. That's, for, that's, for that's the next question. That's the next question. This, this is the point. This is the point. This so is the point. should have clarified who right. own Kaplan's because, because, because so you're interestingly, asking, you're Kaplan's. I think there is a German link to it because oh. I mean because they're the ones who create all the all the roots, all the um, 
because all the land in Cap Estate, for you to buy land in Cap Estate, you basically buy it from Cap Lands, don't you? I'm well, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm talking about, I don't know if now, uh, if land has changed hands now, obviously. You know, but there was a time, basically, if you had to buy land at Cap Estate, you had to buy it I remember, from Cap I remember sitting with Mikey at his office right across from the courthouse, the old courthouse. And of course, gave me details of, because Mikey and I have been friends, you know, good friends. And this is why I find it strange that he would, he would give you a story totally contrary to what he told me. That's why I was able to say, as a matter of fact, yeah. that I know that he, he, was, he was intimately involved Ian, 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 oh, he didn't in, deny that. In, in eh? He didn't deny that. But I'm just saying, in terms of the, the the movement. But I mean, that's not the key thing that we should discuss there. So I mean, we can clarify so, the land. Yeah. Basically, Cabot got 27 million dollars. Not to purchase the land. from from the NIC. Not we don't know about that. No, no, no. no but it says we, we don't know about. We have that. to go on the official word. It Bernard says just to read it. To Let, develop a golf course. But not just read it. The land that is when listen. Let me just see here that. Here it is, NIC is saying mm -hmm. when they tried to purchase the land, mm -hmm. the receiver had already made a commitment to an operative of But it didn't say the land was purchased. You listen to the wording. Nobody could buy it because no, 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 commitment there. No, 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 no. I agree. No, I agree. It doesn't say the land was already in order, okay. was owned uh, by somebody else. It says they were in talks. Yes. The receiver yes. was no Nova Scotia. Let, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. Bernard Puerto Red, right. where, where, where it, it says the monies were given to Cabot. To develop the golf course, not to purchase land and, and, and develop. No, it. no, but here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, you see, the truth of the matter is, the NIC is making all kinds of excuses. As a matter of fact, I saw we, something you, written. You, you cannot say no, that. they are. Let's not no, do no, that, no, no, no. Listen Let's to this. Do no, that. no, no. That's listen. Like. But listen to what I'm saying. Uh, why can't you listen to what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, they are making the excuse that they say um, section section what section <laughs> section twenty one two of the of the of the NIC Act is the reason they have for being able to purchase the land or to give a loan to Cabot. Now, you see, they may say, I, put it this way, they say the cap lands are worth $90 million. Mm -hmm. That's possibly 400 acres of land, probably worth about $90 million. Nobody's, that, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's actually the value of the land on paper. But if the land is not being sold or nobody's buying it, if you want a piece of land, on paper, it says the land is worth $90 million. Somebody comes to you and says, look, $20 million, you are going to possibly sell it to that person, especially if the land is just sitting there. You don't see what you're going to do with it. How are you going to do it? $20 million is, is just as good money because it's just land at the end of the day. The truth of the matter is, and I see give these people $27 million, and they had to use the word develop. You know why they had to use the word develop? Because that is why they are using the excuse that they, under the NIC Act, number 21-2, it says that they can actually purchase land for development. I know that's for their development, not for somebody else. To ah, development. but that is the number that they're citing for the reason why they give Cabot the money. I'm no, 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 yes. They're saying it's for Ambrose. the development of the golf course. Ambrose, Ambrose, let us not play, we know it all. Here it is, a statement is saying what it is. Like I said last week, and I'm yeah. going to repeat it again. Mm. There are many people who are opposed to that deal, and, and they may have their reasons. Mm. I, I don't fault them for that. Are you saying to me that there are so many good lawyers out there, out there amongst those who oppose that deal mm -hmm. and they have not seen it fit to know that NIC did something wrong with our monies, their money and our monies, and they have not challenged it? I mean, I mean, hold let, on, us, let, let, let me finish. Let us not come here mm -hmm. and, and, no, no, and, and say, and say what we believe it is. If we get a statement from, from, from NIC, like mm -hmm. Bernard just read, I mean, the least we can do is, is, is accept it for what it is. No, no, but hold on. But the statement that Bernard read there simply says that NIC gave money to Cabot for developing a golf course. Isn't that what you just read there? Yeah. That's not the dispute. The dispute is not what they gave him the money for. The dispute is, should the NIC be giving no. $27 million of, of them, of the money of the people? You, you can, you, that statement only just states the purpose. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, according to the NIC, should the NIC be given the money that belongs to NIC contributors to a foreign investor who is really and truly not investing? That's the question, you know. You, 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 you again, you're deviating from, 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 from what we just said last week. Last week, you said, as a matter of fact, the money was given to Cabot to purchase and develop the land. And, and, and of course, here it is, here it is. A statement is, 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 in, is contrary to what you said. And I'm just saying, we, none of us are part of NIC. 
we could only go based on what we hear from others or what we read on, 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 on people. Okay? And I, I think, I think the, the officials at the NIC, they're professionals enough to, 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 to of course, put their, 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 you know, thing on people to state exactly what it is. And I believe we, we should only act, we should accept, especially what we, if we're reading something. If it's something we just hear from word of mouth, I could understand. But here it is, we're reading it. it they could be, if you're wrong, so they you're could be because by we're that. reading it, it means it's truth? Is that what, that's what you're saying to me, Michael? So, okay. so because, uh, so wait a minute, you're telling me no, because no, no, the no, NIC no, has right. written that statement yeah. down, right. that means that it is perfectly okay uh, no, that they should uh, give $27 uh, million to a no, foreign I'm investor? Okay. So, no, I'm, I'm agreeing yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. So am I to believe right. what you're saying there is true? If, if, if this is not true, right. granted, it right. may right. not be true. Who is to say what you're saying there is true? So didn't the NIC give $27 million to so a foreign investor? That is true, isn't you know, it, it, it? You know, the is, semantics... Is it not the, true? The you know what semantics? There's nothing to, to do with the semantics. semantics no, 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 no. The reality <laughs> is the discussion last week... Okay, so I, I, I wasn't sure. I said, I, as a matter of fact, I said last week, I'm sure the land is valued about $90 million. I'm sure the land is valued a lot more than the $27 million. Okay, so I'm just, you're saying that the NIC shouldn't be giving I'm lands to a foreigner. So you say, I'm so saying, that's your position. Here's the discussion. Mm -hmm. You made the statement yourself, Bernard, last mm -hmm. week, that I read the rules under which the NIC can give money right. to outside of its fund. Mm -hmm. You said that the NIC themselves are saying that people read it to a certain point. I remember that statement mm -hmm, being made mm -hmm. and they didn't continue. Right. Now, I am now assuming that the continuation that they were making reference to or you were making reference to, mm -hmm. whoever made that statement, was the section which I saw a surrogate of the UWP pointing out last week that in the NIC Act, uh, or number 20, sec I think 21-2, 21-2, that is the basis on the which the NIC gave the money to Cabot. We're not even discussing the reason why NIC gave money to Cabot. We are discussing should the NIC be taking St. Lucian's money, the people who have actually given the money and contributed it to the NIC, should they be taking that money and giving it to a foreign supposed investor? That's what the question was about. So that's week. your question, whether they should be giving it to a foreigner. And whether the right. law that they, by which they are governed mm -hmm. entitles them to do so. Because don't forget the NIC also invests in other... <laughs> that we agree. In other foreign or foreign-owned businesses as well. They've, they've bought shares, they've, they've invested in those they things as well. They have bought shares. So what's the difference no, between, between that foreign investor and, and the other foreign investor? Because, no, no, no. The NIC has bought shares. Has the NIC bought... No, but they've invested bought, as well. No, they've on, invested as well. Cabot is registered in St. Lucia 100% mm -hmm. as having... Own, the NIC has no shares in Cabot. The NIC No, but they get them alone. No, they get them alone, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. But the well, NIC I, honestly, rules... I, hold, I, hold, on, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me clear that. The NIC rules... I saw it. Mm -hmm. It reads, right, that they are... On lending, on lending, right? So other financial institutions, Cabot is not a financial institution. And who are involved in on lending. Okay. Here's, here's what they can lend to, Section 21. Right. Um, surplus monies 21 can be... 21 to surplus money, yeah. Acquisition of land, right? Purchase or construction of buildings, mm -hmm. loans, mm -hmm. government bonds and securities, shares and debentures in, corp in bodies corporate. So that means they can invest in, 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 in the companies. Now, mm -hmm. in terms of the tourism thing, why are they involved in tourism? It says that the, that, that the NIC can invest in the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. they, they prefer to invest in the tourism sector because that sector has been identified as a key productive sector mm -hmm. in St. Lucia. Right. So they have that right to invest in that. So what you're questioning is that they shouldn't be giving a loan? Hold on. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that since the NIC gave $27 million to Cabot, they have invested into Cabot? They, they give them a loan. But it, hold on. It's a loan. Yeah. Hold on. They're so they, they're loan. basically investing. Technically, they're investing. No, no, no. They're, no, no, no. they're investing. taking the money mm -hmm. and giving the money to an investor. Right. They themselves, they, 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 what is it that, what shares are they receiving from Cabot? They, they give them a loan. It's a loan but normally when can the I, NIC invests their money into things, don't they have something? Can, can I interject here? So yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. Can I interject here, please? A while ago, you questioned the, the legality of NIC using our funds. Yeah. To, to give a loan to a foreign investor. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it takes me back to a point that I made last week and I'm going to make it again this time. Um, if you believe or if there are persons out there who believe NIC have acted illegally in using our funds 
to give a loan to a foreign entity. Mm -hmm. I am saying as we speak, mm -hmm. as we speak, there would have been an injunction against NIC. By who? Come on, by who? By who? By, by those who oppose it, those who by know. Who? Listen, listen to me. Those who believe NIC are in the wrong, or it was illegal to uh -huh. give that loan. Right. All right. It does not take. It does not cost much to to get to get an injunction. You know. Is that what you assume? No, no I'm, I'm just. I'm, no, listen, Ambrose. Ambrose. I am getting the feeling from you right. that whilst I respect your opinion that okay, you you believe in, in something that, wh but what you're doing is no, no, don't tell me what I'm doing. Don't say what I'm doing. Just allow, state the facts. Allow, allow me to finish. Yeah, allow me to don't finish. tell me what I'm doing. Allow me state to the facts. You, the way you coming across, it's mm -hmm. like no matter what evidence is being brought to you. Mm -hmm. You will quest keep questioning it as, as being opinion. illegal. That's your no, opinion. No, no, but you just said it. No, 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 that's your Everything opinion. Everything Bernard is reading that from. That is your opinion, Michael. And I, 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 okay. No, 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 I but you can't dismiss somebody's opinion. No, no, so no, let, no. let Michael make it, express you know, his you know, opinion. Yeah, yeah, because it's an opinion. This is this is the thing, yeah. and, and I'm telling you, Bernard, let me, let me say it here today, mm -hmm. that if this show continues like this, I am not going to participate in it. I'll tell you why. Out, out of last week, and Ambrose participated in, 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 in that talk on social media. That I am so thing into UWP that my head is buried into Alan's, e, you know, what? And, and and yeah, and the talk went on and on and bring back, bring back. No, let me just finish. Bring back, um, what's his name, Dini's and what have you? Because I'm a I'm a flabo. I'm a bamboo. This. Listen, the world knows. The world knows. I support the United Workers Party. I don't support any person in the United. I support the United the United Workers Party. All right. The politicians that are my friends, I, I could count them on one hand. Let me let me make it clear here. Since Honorable Alan Chastney became, became Prime Minister. He and I have never had a conversation. I have never been to his office. Never. All right? So what I'm doing there, I'm not doing it on behalf of the United Workers. United Workers, I don't even know I am here. You understand my point? I don't come here to defend the UWP. I come here to have a discussion based on what is happening in St. Lucia, right or wrong. If it's right, I support it. If it's wrong, I will be the first to call it out. I am not one who panders to politicians. I don't do that. I don't. Do, I don't come here to take you know political talk and 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 and, and come here to take, take chats from 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 political parties and bring it here. No, I speak here based on what I see and what I know. I don't defend or come here to to, to support any political organization. I'm, I'm, I'm just I just want to make that clear. So what whatever we're discussing here, I'm discussing it based on what I believe is right, what I believe is wrong. Okay, um, I think we'll take a break <laughs> at this point. Um, this is The Reality Show on Calabas TV. We will be back uh, shortly. You are watching The Reality Show, streaming live on stlucifirst.com. This summer, get ready, set for school with the Educator or Educator Plus loan from the St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union. No more back-to-school stress. The Educator loans will take care of everything you need, including school fees, materials, and supplies. Up to $10,000 for primary and secondary students and up to $20,000 for young adults with affordable payments for up to four years. Call or visit us for more information today. The Educator and Educator Plus loan only at the St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union. Save and borrow with pride. Terms and conditions apply. My sisters, come let us go. Massey have everything for you. Quality goods, the best for you. Massey, you can live. Come on. I'm going, my sisters, cause they're leading. My sisters have everything. Appliance and grocery shopping. My sisters, they have for you. Like you don't understand, well, hear me. Massey is the best in the country. No other can do it like Massey. No, baby, no. Tell the park your groceries in a Massey park. Massey stores is acting the country. Johnny comes to help we help we. And for who did the part? Thank you for more part. Massey stores is doing everything they can do. Massey stores come let us go. Massey have everything for you. Quality goods the best for you. Together, we can stop many childhood diseases, help our children grow strong and live healthy. Vaccination, it's our gift of health to your little one. Bring your baby and come get it. It's free. For further information, please contact your nearest community wellness center or private doctor. All in, get vaccinated.
Nurses will be visiting homes and schools to verify the health cards of children ages 0 to 5 years old. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. We are the Bank of Solution for every solution, building our future today. We are the Bank of Solution for every solution, with you every step of the way. Always there for you, serving you and me, the solution way, we like family. Always there for you, helping you and me, B.O.S.L. News there for me. Are the Bank of St. Lucia for every solution. Bank of St. Lucia, all the bank you need. This is our reality, Calabash TV. This is the reality show on Calabash TV, and as you can tell, this is quite a very a heated discussion and uh, there's nothing wrong with having heated discussions especially on issues involving um, the, the, the contributions of, of St. Lucian taxpayers. Um, we have with us in studio Ambrose and Michael who's here with us as well and I wanted to move the conversation along um, because um, I think we will make, Ambrose was making a point about um, whether NIC should be investing in a foreign company and one of the things and when I went through the documents one of the things I wanted to discuss is uh, how can the NIC, um, don't get me wrong, I don't think the NIC should be spending contributors' money um, investing it without giving some serious due diligence in terms of its research and so on. They're saying that they're investing the surplus. And, and they're saying they have $2.3 billion um, um, our portfolio. So that means it's a pretty, a pretty solid company to survive the few um, um, global clashes and crashes and so on. So it's a pretty solid company. So what I wanted to find out is, in terms of the NIC, and I know in NIC took that investment to go into a golf course, and we discussed as, as well last week whether a golf course was the best investment. So I wanted to discuss a couple of things. Um, since NIC is investing contributors' money into a project or loaning that money to a project, whether there should be certain conditions attached to, the, to that project. So for example, Ambrose, you sell juice, Michael is into transportation. Whether NIC should insist that you build, you, we're giving you money, we're loaning you money to build a hotel, that transportation should be for locals. So Michael sure. should be able to operate buses there. Ambrose right. should be able to Very sell your good. juice there because don't import juice if you can get local juice and so on. So whether, and even photographers, for example, because I know the photographers have an issue about not being able to get on properties. Whether the NIC should say, well, this is my contributor's money and I have to safeguard the interest in your project. Mm -hmm. Whether you have to reserve photography mm -hmm. for local investors. I wanted to have that discussion because I'm saying... If it's a bank giving the money to an investor, and I guess the bank can't impose those things. But if you're going to use my money oh, yeah. and then deny me of an opportunity, okay, for example, we have a video production company. If, if Cabot brings in its own video, videographers and, video, and I can't get any work at Cabot, and you're going to, you're going to use my money, whether well, it's fair to me as an investor in NIC, where they can use my money to bring foreign videographers and editors and so on, preventing me from making money from your from, which is happening on some hotels because the guys can't go there and film weddings and so on. So I wanted to have a discussion in terms of whether there should be conditions. And I know it's not part of the uh, mandate as NIC in terms of the policy guidelines and so on, the investment and policy guidelines, but whether there should be mandate or so, whether there should be a discussion on whether the NIC, if it's going to loan money to somebody, that there should be conditions attached to it to safeguard the interest of contributors. Yeah, Bernard, I, I agree with you 100% on that because, I, I, again, like you said, you rightfully said, it is, it is our money. And um, knowing that we're facilitating you with the people's money, I think access, whilst, whilst I, can, I, wish, I don't think we can say 100% access should be given to locals, but, um, uh, of course, provision should be made for locals. And, and I'll go further to say, uh, Bernard, again, you mentioned, um, of course, a loan could be given upon due diligence being done. But I do not think the NIC is doing enough to assist um, local entrepreneurs in St. Lucia. Last week we were discussing the, 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 the unfortunate situation that, that Baker from, from Canaries found himself in and he, co he, he couldn't, he couldn't secure, secure funding anywhere to continue his business. I think people like that, while the development bank was, was, was set up to assist people like that, but where, where the development bank cannot come in, or even NIC through the development bank, Okay, you go to a bank, you meet all the requirements, and, and if the development bank can, don't have the funds, or I mean, the money can come from there, and we know we have an avenue to, 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 to think. I think the NIC needs to do a lot, a lot, a lot more to assist the locals because, in truth and in fact, the money, the money belongs to the laypersons of St. Lucia, the poor man from, from Canaries, the, 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 the laborer from, from, from Devara. 
that, that's our money. And I, I think I think that there should be an opportunity for them to um, enjoy the monies, not only upon retirement, but you know, whilst whilst they they they're able to. Well, for me, basically, I just think it's it seems like it's a very slippery slope that it looks like we're moving into a direction that I don't think is the best direction. Because, I mean, even within the NIC, as you read their, 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 their policies and their legislation, clearly they make provision for other, other, um, for other financial organizations so they can actually themselves directly um, control the, the on-lending processes or they themselves will give it to an organization that is involved in on lending and um, and so and so so the, the the fact is that when we have a situation i know it's the references to surplus surplus mm -hmm. i don't know what the surplus of the nic is i mean it's a company that boasts of having over 2 billion dollars in, 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 in their portfolio, mm -hmm. and, and clearly, I don't know what the surplus is, it, but I, I know somebody told me that when they, you know, many, long time ago, I would say over 20 years ago, there's over a billion dollars, the NIC had over a billion dollars in its portfolio, so, I mean, now it has a two point something billion, but um, the, the, the question would be, um, th themselves directly getting involved in, in giving in giving monies and not necessarily doing it through which is what the legislation says that the the other lending organ I, I would feel safer put it this way I would feel safer if the NIC gave a hundred million dollars to the Saint Lucia Development Bank and then uh, and then get the money distributed via the development bank because I know as a bank they set up to to take care of security because from when you read the legislation you see it makes it makes um it makes reference to security security and i mean how good is the nic at determining whether uh, the security i know nowadays they have all kinds of um persons attached to the organization and persons in finance and things of that kind but at the same time you know they're not in the business as i would say they're not in the business of of loaning of loaning on a daily basis so they have to i would feel safer put it this way if the money was going through uh, an actual organization that was a lending institution and they did mention in the statement too that um, they do have significant amounts millions in bank of St. Lucia and um, SLDB and First National Bank, which is saying that that money is, they have in savings there as well in those banks. And so some of that savings is used, obviously. But I agree with you, you talk about setting up a facility um, that can be used. So they wouldn't directly be involved in it, but they would set up a facility that would be basically um, make those, that funding available. Which the legislation gives them the right to do. Right, to make, to make that, uh, that money available to them and so on. But what I'm saying is, yes, so, so but I'm saying in terms of that loan specifically, about conditions for that loan, and also um, in terms of, um, in, in, in terms of the, the NIC itself, in terms of its structure and so on, whether its composition, or there should be some kind of advisory committee comprising of critical sectors of, of, of the community to basically advise, because I know they have the board and the investment committee and so on, and they have ministers and so on who advise them and so on, but whether they should be, send more, because since you, you're holding taxpayers' money, pensioners' funds and so on, whether they should have a, a say in terms of, of how you invest in terms, of, in terms of the country, because something like food security, for example, whether it should be a deliberate policy that NIC is involved in, in, in helping farmers and reduce our food import bill, which is huge. Uh, again, not using the, the pensioners' money, but using surplus or even creating another fund and using the proceeds of that fund to go into helping us to reduce our food import bill. Because when you do that, you're basically um, helping us to have a more productive society. Because if we stop eating all the junk food that we're importing and we're eating healthier, then our healthcare costs as well will be reduced. So those kind of discussions, I think that you know, at some point in time, that you know, solutions need to have with NIC as a contributor in terms of seeing how we can use a local entity to help St. Lucia. Because like we say, they're supporting foreign entities and so on. But whether the time is right for them to get a little more involved, not putting anybody's funds at risk, but getting more involved in helping to advance certain sectors in St. Lucia. So it's a, a kind of discussion I think um, I'd like to see um, and I see have down the road. Because when they, when they review the investment policy and guidelines and so on, whether that's something that... Because we have to start looking at ways of making ourselves more independent as a country. And if we have an institution that has that amount of resources and it has so much that it can loan to a foreign um, entity and that maybe there can be a redirection of focus to make sure that we have food security with climate change and so on. Now I see that NIC says that they have $51 million that they put aside for a housing project 
low income housing project, which is, uh, we don't have much details on it, but I think they mentioned it in a statement. Yeah, well, uh, what, I, what I know, they've invested in um, uh, that, uh, that land housing project, of course, it, it, it started as in, in, in Corinth, Emerald, Emerald Developments. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said at the last time, you know, most of it is, is well, not most, sorry, um, some of it is still there unsold because of the, the price attached to it. It's not low cost? Um, no, it's not, it's not low cost it's at all. <laughs> well, it, it's what about it, it was supposed to have been uh -huh. low cost. Well, it's affordable, um, yes. I know NIC have lands in the, in the Roso area. Those were lands um, vested in, in, in the NH National Housing Corporation. But because the National Corporation was indebted to NIC, um, on the new CDC buildings, um, there was a swap, and I, I'm a, I was I, I was I'm a director of, of, of housing at the time when you know we gave them the land, you know for the monies owed to them, and, and that's still not all. We still still owe them. Um, the, somewhere in points or in the same the same the same thing was done. Um, so you know, I, I think I think um, uh, NIC really needs to find a, a way to to have a, a more more. Whilst the professionals, yes, but I believe the laypersons who, who the monies have been used, I think, I think they need to be part of and to be made aware more of what the money has been used to do. And, 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 and increase the, the, in the pension as well, because um, if our pensioners have a better quality of life, I mean, they obviously spend the money here. They can pay for the medical bills and, and take care of themselves. I think, you know, we have a more productive and healthier country as well. I think that one of the things that they should consider at some point in time is, is you know, giving people a healthier pension. But, but, but I tell you, it's sad in a way when I think about it. As a matter of fact, it's almost depressing. It's depressing in a way because when you think an organization like the NIC, which really is an organization that, yes, I know um, when you are an employer, employers also do contribute to the NIC because it's 5% you, 5% the employer, right? And so the employers are involved in contribution, con contributions. But when you think about it, but the whole purpose of an NIC is supposed to be to look after the population, um, the population of workers who has actually gone through, you know, gone through the NIC over the years. And it, when you really begin to think that suddenly it seems like you're getting an impression that it is almost becoming like, a, 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 I would say, a bank for well-to-do well-to-do persons and and I mean locals cannot boast of the privileges that that that, that wealthy f foreign business people can boast of and, and and so when you think about it their first priority obviously cannot be the people who are responsible for enabling the development and their growth and the growth of their portfolio and it really it, it's actually very sad and that's one of the key things key reasons why I guess you know that I am I am so adamant that they are not doing what they ought to be doing you know because to me when i think of nic what i think of is like a little society hall you know, i remember back in the days when people used to bring the little the little how many dollars to the society hall i could remember you know my 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 my, my mom doing that bringing the little few pennies to the society hall and 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 that was you so when somebody dies that they can get some money to pay for them for the funeral and things of that kind when i think of the nic that's what i think but obviously that with that kind of portfolio 2.2 .2 billion dollars maybe they are beginning to think themselves in in the region of you know or, or in, the, in the same 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 place as as major major corporations in countries like the u.s so 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 basically the association is wealthy because that's what wealthy do wealthy hangs out with wealthy you know? And, yeah, and sometimes you invest in somebody who can give you heavy returns as well. So that's part of the... Uh, I mean, we've seen the, the example of the, the SLDB and so on, and, 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 and um, you, sometimes you try to invest and support, but we as solutions need to make an effort to pay back our loans or else we run everything broke. And so um, I can understand and I see you wanting to invest where you can get returns for contributors and so on. But obviously it's something, and we're running out of time, it's something that I think that the country ought to discuss. I'm happy this, this has come up in terms of this NIC cabot um, situation. So now we can have a, a, a detailed discussion and look at the um, investment policy and guidelines and see, you know, whether it needs to be tweaked at this point um, and, and whether, you know, look at the portfolio and whether the portfolio can be a lot healthier if there's probably greater focus on, on, on other areas. I mean, it's a discussion that we can have um, as time goes on. Um, I know we went out of time. Um, I wanted to very quickly mention, we can, if anybody has anything to contribute to NIC, we can still do that. Um, but St. Lucian, a few St. Lucian, well, Panam Games are now on. 
um, in, in Peru, I think it is. Um, and St. Lucia, uh, St. Lucia is, well, Levin Spencer is defending her title as well. And, and the point I wanted to make, apart from Levin Spencer, probably Janelle Schaefer, we don't know too many of the athletes who are there and whether we should, you know, there should be a bigger effort made to, you know, there's, a, there's a, somebody who's doing sailing first. I've never, never heard of him before, but he's a St. Lucian who's doing sailing um, for St. Lucia. Um, and also, um, you know, there are other athletes from Babuno. Um, Reynolds is there with Javelin. Okay. So we expect him to do well as well. So, I mean, we know, we know and there's a St. Lucian football team on the 19, on the 15 okay. team in Miami right now playing. Um, and they just won, I think, um, one of the matches. And the ladies as well on the 15 are also... Overseas, yeah, so yeah. there are quite a bit of of, of Ocean teams overseas, but we don't really know who they are. We don't know who the captain of the national team is, and so I'm making a point. We were talking earlier on about we need to know our people and understand and support our people that we um, ought to know, and we ought to make an interest as well, develop an interest in knowing who it is that's representing us. Bernard, I, I, you're, you're right on that, and I think I think um, uh, enough attention is not being paid to. Um, Sports and athletics in St. Lucia. I mean, as you just, as you rightfully mentioned, an event like that taking place. I think every every household should 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 know who every single member of the teams are and what 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 um, uh, what field that they, they specialize in. Um, to be honest with you, I I, I wasn't even aware when games was, was on as we speak because uh, to me there have been very little publicity mm -hmm. on that. And I, I, I think I think moving forward that the authorities need to need to do better. There there, there is a, a, a department. Uh, sports that is well sports some people may see sports and 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 and, and athletics as 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 you know separate but they're not they both fall under the, the, the ministry of sports and i think um like i said a lot more should have been done a lot more could have been done and a lot more needs to be done to ensure even whilst the now that the game has, the games have started that st lucians need to be kept abreast with 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 the results of the games on a daily basis to know to know you know how St. Lucian's are faring in, in, in those games, and I, I think better should be done. I, I did not even know <laughs> they, they were having Pan Am games. I, I honestly did not know, and actually, I mean, our number one um, high jumper is actually defending mm -hmm. her title, and, and I don't know. I, I think I'm quite an avid um, follower of things of that, of various kinds of national um, interests on, on Facebook, and I... I was not even aware. So it's, it's sad in a way, but these kind of things, you know, what, what Michael says there, but these things require money. These things require money. And the truth of the matter is, I've realized in this country, money is not spent on the things that are most important. And um, sports, that's why it, it continues. I remember we started this sports conversation a year ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, we even suggested about setting up something for Laverne. I heard about Laverne. Possibly he just said that she was going to be set up nicely. I could remember the conversation and nothing has happened. She probably is, a day like today, in a worse condition than she was a year ago. So uh, for me, it's just like the priorities. The priorities are not really the development of, of I would say, the indigenous population. I'm not, I, don't, I don't get that at all. And so that's how I was making a point earlier on about us, the history and knowing the history of the brigands and what they fought for. And, 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 and how we, we ought to keep fighting um, for St. Lucia and, and, and St. Lucians, and also to, the, to, to, to fight for the right allocation of resources for our sporting teams and so on, because um, we have the football, the young footballers representing us, and if you look at football fields around the country, and if you look at the coaching programs, that everybody's uh, basically trying to make do with what they have, and to me, that's where you ought to invest um, quite a bit in terms of coaches, um, for your football teams, for your cricket teams, for your netball teams, and so on, and also in the facilities, so that you can get proper facilities to train. I, I passed last week, I think it was last week, I passed, uh, yeah, last week, Wednesday or Thursday, I passed, I actually passed by the Bexar field, which is the main field in Bexar, and I saw some guys with their little machine um, trying to cut some grass, just so they can create, they can cut some grass. The grass is about, is about that high. Mm -hmm. it, it's very high. And, um, and the, for them to play a little small goals football, they have to cut out their little field. I, I, I think it's sad. And, and to me, that, 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 that should not be. That should well, not I, be I, I, I recall um, it was during the 2006-2011 era. 
and this is why I said a while ago, I believe the, the emphasis on sports is, is probably dying out. I remember be between 2006 and 2011 when, when of course, Laverne was in her prime, Darren Sami had just made his, his breakthrough on the West Indies team. Both of them were honored by the then government. And um, of course, again, I was at housing at the time doing the Marigold development. Both of them were given lots, lots of land in Marigold. And I think, I think I have, not, I have not heard that much been done since that era. And I, I think, I think um, uh, this is something that the governments, go government, whichever government, need to revisit. And of course, while, of course, the, 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 the athletes and the sports personalities are, are, are recognized for their contribution, but the, 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 we, the locals, the laypersons, need to be kept abreast with, with, with what is happening. Of course, like I said a while ago, the participation. And, and this is the only way we could support, whilst we are not there in person, but through social media and other platforms, we could support them. And that, of course, they will know that we, we, we're rooting with them. And it will encourage them to do better. All right. I think we've come to the end of uh, today's program. Yeah. Um, Michael, Ambrose, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for a very spirited debate. Uh, we have no assignments for next week. <laughs> 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 um, but I'm sure there will be, like I said, a continuing ongoing discussion. There's so much more that we have to discuss um, happening nationally. Um, but we want to thank you for the uh, spirited debate. And also, um, we're hoping that, like everything else, um, you have those debates, but we want something meaningful to come out of it. Yeah. Because we don't want to be having the same set of debates. But like we're, not, we're now talking about the, the, the gun violence in the U.S. Right now, everybody's impassioned about it. Everybody's discussing it. And then next, next two weeks, move on to some other topic. Okay. Donald Trump sends us, sends us a tweet, and then we get distracted, and then we don't discuss it until the next shooting. So let's hope that uh, we do get some active um, consideration and discussion on critical national issues, and that um, we can continue those discussions right here on The Reality Show. Again, Michael, thank you. Yeah. Ambrose, thank you. Thank you. Thank this you. is The Reality Show. We'll join us again next week, Monday. I am Bernard Vanis. This is happening. This is our reality. This is Calabash TV. This summer, get ready, set for school with the Educator or Educator Plus loan from the St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union. No more back to school stress. The Educator loans will take care of everything you need, including school fees, materials, and supplies. Up to $10,000 for primary and secondary students and up to $20,000 for young adults with affordable payments for up to four years. Call or visit us for more information today. The Educator and Educator Plus loan only at the St. Lucia Civil Service Cooperative Credit Union. Save and borrow with pride. Terms and conditions apply. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Atwell Daglish, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and the dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited, only available at Atwell Daglish.